it can happen to your brother, um, your dad, husband, uh, friend. There's no way of knowing how you're going to react uh, when you take this drug. It can completely ruin your life overnight. I took one pill two and a half years ago and, and nothing has gotten better. Before it happened to me, I could never have imagined it. I only took it four times for a total of one milligram. That is the complete destruction of, of, of my life. He uh, said he just couldn't withstand this nightmare. The finasteride had destroyed its mind and its body. And uh, it acted in poison him. He was so full of life and just lovely to have around. Connell's loss has devastated so, so many of, of his friends and his family. And he said he was so, so ashamed. Even in spite of him taking his life, I never, I will never be ashamed. I'm just proud of him, and I am just so sorry that he had to take those nine pills. If I had heard of BFS before taking the finasteride, I, I would have never done it. Little silly things like Ashton Kutcher, the movie star, he confessed that he'd been on Dutasteride for ten years, and I was like, right, well. Mm. How can this drug really be? I got the referral to, to the dermatologist. They don't even talk about like the side, like the sexual side effects. You just assume it's safe. I don't think there was any mention of anything to any of us. Never mind an eighteen-year-old lad. We would imagine that something you're prescribed has to be safe. And if there are side effects, and you go back with those side effects, then your GP is going to um, tell you. But this is not what happened to Connell. There had been the warning of the uh, uh, possible dangers of this, I know Danny wouldn't have taken. I want to make it clear, I was not aware of the extent of post finasteride syndrome. The leaflet that comes with the drug is ridiculously slight. Practically nothing is mentioned on that. There's some clear clinical features of the disease that remain unacknowledged. One of them is the crash. I'm sure you're familiar with it. There's a dramatic development of or worsening of symptoms after stopping the medication. I'm only getting negative side effects. So mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just stopped it. I felt a bit better after that for about, I don't know, a week or two. So after I quit, like I had like a one week period where like I felt amazing. I thought, okay, uh, that's, that's fine. Like I've stopped the drug and these adverse effects have stopped. Fantastic. Like so many young men, Danny thought this would all go away, you know, when he stopped taking but it just got worse. It was then that his symptoms started to get really quite bad. On the fourth day, that is when the crash occurred. So like overnight, like everything changes. Essentially, I mean, anything about you is up in the air to change. The proverbial really hit the fan. The complete cascade of so many symptoms just all came in. All of these effects got, got way worse when I stopped taking the drug. Just getting worse and worse and worse. Brain fog. Sleep paralysis. It, not only could he not move, he couldn't catch his breath. He had tinnitus, blurry vision, cognitive impairment, he had sexual dysfunction. The list was actually endless. He still at this point he still didn't know what has made me like this, what has happened to me. This is not, oh, you're you and here's some side effects on top of you. It's body horror. Along the jawline, it was hurting. It was uh, felt bruised. My perineum, which previously was bulging, that all but disappeared. Some people have that are greatly impacted will have, you know, atrophy of their genitalia. A dysfunction in the area of his sexual nature and he had pain in his personal areas. And like sexually, obviously, like penile shrinkage, my penis shrank. His, um, Muscles started to atrophy. I got muscle twitches. They're so severe, like, it felt like, uh, like their muscle was dying. Pretty much lost muscle and I gained fat. Just a horrible muscle pain. It's like somebody has given you a good beating, you know? Muscle loss, uh, it's extreme. There's also skeletal issues. This all, this all occurred within, like, the first couple of weeks of the crash. All mm. these physical changes. Physical uh, deterioration that is quite shocking. Um, you know, I've talked to men who have osteo, you know, yeah. osteoporosis in their 40s. Things that you absolutely wouldn't see in someone of that age without some other, you know, disease process. It feels like your heart's going to explode out of your chest. Like, you're so anxious. He called us in a state of panic. He, I, I never heard Danny. Danny panicking about anything. He had been played for years and years. You don't expect him to come off the pitch halfway through 
with an almost panic attack. He was a confident player. He was a confident young man. You can't sleep. The insomnia is crazy. You couldn't stay asleep for very long at all. My sleep just went to pieces. When I say insomnia, I know a lot of us, when we think about insomnia, we think of saying they're counting sheep, right? And so, you know, you're having some issues because you're stressed, whatever. But I'm talking about like not sleeping. Extreme head pressure. Inability to cope with stress. Everyday life stress, stress that is not really right. stress. And all the cognitive issues like focus, uh, memory. He said he couldn't think straight. By trying to think through plumes of smog. How you perceive things around you is completely different. The derealization is so horrifying. I feel like I'm kind of like, I'm kind of watching myself do things. Like, it's like a normal person doesn't make any sense, but like, you don't feel like connected to your surroundings. I just could not feel any pleasure or reward whatsoever and i looked at myself in that mirror in absolute terror every day i'm just kind of carry on as a, almost like a zombie-like shell and trying to remember how i behaved in that situation before pfs people not having any passion anymore for what they were once so passionate about anhedonia you don't really get any joy out of anything you don't get like any sense of like accomplish accomplishment out of doing anything this is not depression what we're talking about here it's like if something has switched off in your brain and danny never had any depression or mental health problems at all he was always up about everything motivated and excited about life i distinctly remember thinking, this is unbelievable, what is happening to me. It is beyond the human experience. And it's all inhuman. It's almost like sci-fi. After sex or after, uh, you know, masturbation, you just feel like lobotomizing. It's a strange feeling, feeling, isn't it? Sexually, obviously, you know, shrinkage, uh, libido. Dude, it's hard to get an erection. My genitals will just be cold, like, all the time. Every part of PFS sucks, you know what I mean? Even if, you like, people say, if you just get, like, a sexual size or whatever, like, it's not as bad. If you can't have sex, like, you can't, it's hard to have relationships, you know? Like, even just that, like, let's be real. It still affects your life, like, crazy. Their intimate relationships, yeah, the vast majority ended. Memory loss, you know, I, I can cope with that. But it, it's, it's the sexual dysfunction that's, that's yeah, it, it, that's killing me. You know, he, he was very much um, a ladies' man when he was young. But that had all gone. He then told the doctor all about post-finasteride syndrome. Really, they weren't having it. You have this medication that's widely taken. It's the only uh, medication prescribed for hair loss. And most clinicians have no idea what it is. Much of the skepticism stems from a lack of knowledge about this medication and that the persistent adverse effects were first published in 2011. 71 men, these were young, healthy men. They had no medical problems, they had no psychiatric problems, they were on no medications, and they decided to take finasteride, and they stopped the medication, but the sexual side effects never went away. And nothing else has changed, you know, I'm, I'm still having a very healthy lifestyle. I've never been on drugs or smoking, so I don't know what, what has changed, you know. Only one thing has changed is that, that I've taken finasteride. So you see all these doctors and consultants, uh, they don't want to hear it and they, they try and compartmentalize it um, in the different other conditions, which it never is. It's unfortunate that uh, many doctors do not believe their patients who know their bodies best. They didn't believe him, and so they diagnosed him with delusional disorder. I mean, I don't know, do they have any accountability for what they do? Anxiety disorder? Um, that's a classic, I think. Like, it's just, yes, it's stress. And it's not neurological, it's psychological, they say. And that's a big, huge difference. There are two different worlds. Never once did they go back over his records and have a look. I had his records for a short time, and straight away I could see where it started and what happened. I mean, it was 11 different medications by the time he died. He still didn't say that he was any better from the medications they put him on. I just look and think, this is just so wrong. And did somebody not look at what was happening and think something's not right here? The horrifying nature of this is that the families, again, because there's no treatment, there's no cures, um, they had gone to multiple doctors without any help and with you know a great deal of uh, absolute skepticism. So now they're saying we're... He's, he's got mental health difficulties. So really, yeah, he probably did at this point because um, 
of everything that he'd mm. gone through. And nobody was listening. Families are, are trying to unravel this at the same time seeing their child literally slip away. I had an eco doppler done on the penis to see if there was some kind of damage in the penis. And there were, obviously. This is your old yeast. I gave him all the studies for post finasteride syndrome. Please read at this if you don't know about the condition. He didn't want to look at them. My family doctor denied that this could even happen from finasteride. He began to mock the condition, laughing at it. Pretty much just like kind of laughed at me and like smiled. At the end, he didn't give me any solution. He refused a nothing linked to finasteride. I went out crying from that consultation. It was kind of a slap in the face. Like, I haven't been back since. He, he was a neurologist, board certified MD. He didn't even look at the studies I had in my hand. He was like, good job on, on the studies there, but that's probably more long-term use. It's completely dismissed it, and that was it. They all do the same. They, they take the blood tests, your blood hormones, they're fine. They're all within range. There's a lot of hurdles to get through, and eventually, after spending a lot of money, getting a lot of tests, uh, they basically tell you there's nothing they can do about it. So on paper, you're perfectly healthy. Doesn't matter if, if you're not. So it, there's nothing we can do. And all they can do is prescribe me another form of Viagra. I would have basically probably like going to doctor some like in 15th century and uh, telling him about my problem. It's just exactly the same experience. So uh, we're relatively left swimming in open water trying to trying to survive. Humiliation and anger, of course, when you're there, uh, and helplessness. I'd say patients are blue in the face, frankly, reporting this to their clinicians, and they have done nothing collectively in terms of reporting to government or higher up you're, you're on your own if you to summarize it if you have pfs you're on your own simple as that i feel like i died i had a life before pfs and i have this new life now i don't get any enjoyment out of like hanging out with people it's like my friends are kind of gone obviously relationships relationships are gone every part of my life is gone and i definitely had some patients tell me that they'd rather not be alive if this were continuing to uh, bother them and that's obviously very concerning. It says on the label of finasteride, some patients have reported suicidal thoughts. It's like, yeah, okay, but why are, why are they? Part of that is when your entire uh, body is under assault from this and you cannot function in any way the way that you did previous to it. Every day is torture. And believe me, when you don't want to die, but you feel like you're not being given a choice, the prospect of suicide is so horrifying I know it's, it's ghoulish to speak about this in such frank terms, but this is the damned reality of this disease. And this is the situation that I've ended up in because of taking one milligram of a hair loss pill. He was a great son, and he was a good brother, and uh, he would have been a good father. <laughs> she says, I will always be grateful that I knew Connell and had the pleasure of sharing so many happy and fun times with him throughout our school and uni years. I will always smile because Connell lived. That was from Cara. I cannot believe that I go to a grave to visit him. People that suffer from this, if they feel even the slightest spark of like, I can pull up a fight here. They should give it a face, you know, we need, we need more faces. My hope is eventually we figure it out and, and we don't have to have any more conversations like this at some point. That some young guy doesn't come through and have his life ruined because his hair was thinning or, or whatever. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, man. It's sickening.